and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. It is I, Commander Cheapskate, and we are back with another episode of Cheap Shots, our series dedicated to showing you how to save money on the wargaming hobby. And on today's episode, we will show you how to cheaply and quickly paint up the Geller Pox Infected. Now, the Geller Pox Infected are a kill team for Games Workshop's Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. They originally came out in the Rogue Trader edition of Kill Team about two or three years ago, and for the longest time you could not actually purchase this Kill Team without actually purchasing that starter box set. Now that the newer edition of Kill Team has dropped, the Geller Pox Affected are available for the first time in their own box set, and this is what the end result will look like if you decide to use our cheapskate method to paint up your Kill Team. As you can see, they are fully brightly colored in a beautiful tabletop standard. And so long as you follow the techniques and materials that we suggest uh, to paint up your team to look just like this, we're talking about a grand total investment of $49.94. And of course, that's assuming that you're purchasing everything for the very first time. Now, when you compare that for the cost, it's gonna, uh, you're going to have to pay out of pocket for the Army Painter as well as Citadel products. Uh, that total is going to cost you $285.40. And when you compare that with our Cheapskate method, we're saving you $235.46 total. So that being said, let's go ahead and show you guys how to quickly paint up your Geller Pox Infected and save you a bunch of money at the same time. So once you're done assembling your miniatures, the first thing you want to do, of course, is to texture the bases. Now in this situation, as you can see in this photo, I decided to go with a really simple sand texture. It's exactly the same texture I use for the majority of the miniatures that I paint up on this channel, and it's really simple. All you gotta do is get some wood glue, apply that wood glue all over the top of your base, and then dust it with some sand that you get from the outside. For me, I have a garden outside my backyard, so all I do is just take some of the sand from the garden, just dust it real quick, and of course I got this beautiful texture. You could, of course, use your granite or sterling mud or whatever technical paint you want to from games workshop the only problem is that paint is kind of expensive at seven dollars and eighty cents a pot whereas sand and wood glue you can get abundance of the stuff for just pennies on the dollar now once this dries of course the next thing you want to do of course is to seal your base so that way the texture doesn't come flaking off so the sealer recipe that I like to use on my miniatures is a combination of wood glue as well as water. What I do is I combine wood glue and water to about a 50-50 mix and when combined together it will have the same viscosity as uh, milk is pretty much what it'll look like. Now once you get that wood glue water mixture what you're going to do is you're going to paint it like a shade all over the top of the texture that you just put on your bases and just go let it sit back and dry. Now this stuff dries pretty quickly because water evaporates quite rapidly, so about 20 to 30 minutes. And once it is done drying, you'll create an airtight seal that will keep that texturing directly on your bases and prevent it from flaking off as well. So now that you're done sealing the bases, the next thing I do now is a primer. Now in this situation, because we have so many miniatures in this kill team, we have, what is it, uh, 16, uh, 16, 23, 23 miniatures in this team. To make the painting process go by faster and to save us a lot of money at the same time, what we're going to use, we're going to use spray paint to paint most of these miniatures up. Now in this situation, I use a couple of spray paints that I purchased from uh, Walmart. For the uh, three Vox mutant, uh, uh, Vox walkers that you see in the background, as well as the four major monsters in this kill team, I use Rust-Oleum's uh, Dark Mocha Spray Paint. It's a satin dark brown finish. Uh, it costs $4.99 at my local Walmart, and all I do is I just spray the entirety of the miniatures with that, uh, with that spray in order to create a nice, beautiful uh, primer to work off of. What it does, it also paints most of the miniatures as well, so all we gotta do is just neaten up with some dry brushes and by adding different colors on top of it. Now for the insects, for the giant leaping flea looking ones as well as the uh, the uh, the fly looking ones I just basically use rust -Oleum flat black primer that costs three dollars ninety nine cents at my local Walmart for that now for the little nurglings as well as the little worms I decided to use rust -Oleum camouflage paint in the sand color it's an ultra matte paint that costs three dollars ninety nine cents as well and just put it once over all over the entirety of the miniatures now priming actually does a couple of things the first thing that it does of course is create an uneven surface for your acrylic paint to adhere to if you actually try to paint acrylic paint on bare plastic, there's not much surface tension to keep the acrylic paint on your miniature, so the slightest amount of friction will cause the paint to basically rub off, ruining the finish of your miniature. So priming 
allows the surface tension to actually help it increase uh, acrylic paints to adhere to it. Now the second thing that priming does as well is based on whatever undercoat color you're using, it does have a impact on the vibrancy of the colors that you have. Traditionally speaking, the brighter the colors that you want to use on your miniatures, the brighter the primer you should use. So white, for example, being the best primer to use for really bright, vibrant color schemes, while darker colors are good for darker color schemes. Now, if you see in this picture, I didn't use really all that different, uh, I didn't use traditional primers for the most part. Black was the only one that I used that was uh, the traditional primer. And the reason why is because for the brown tones, I'm gonna to be using successive layers of dry brush to paint those up. And it's gonna actually take care of most of our base coating as well. Now, once you are done using those primers, of course, the next thing you wanna do now is start working on our base coats. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is to work on the giant monsters as well as the fox walkers that come with this kill team. Now in this situation, we're going to brighten up the flesh tones for these guys because flesh covers most of these miniatures. And I wanted to go with a darker flesh tone for these guys. Traditionally, you see a lot of kill teams, uh, especially Gillette Pox Effect, having a pale kind of palette flesh look for their kill teams. I thought that was kind of uh, pedestrian. I wanted to go something a little bit different this time so that way my kill team stands out from the rest. So that's the reason why I went with the darker color scheme for the flesh tones. Now in this case what I do is I use a Territorial Beige by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs 50 cents on my local Walmart and all you can do is just a quick dry brush all over the entirety of the miniature. Now what dry brushing does, it creates the illusion of depth on your miniatures because what ends up happening is when you actually dry brush a miniature, the pigments of the paint actually adhere to the erased surface of the miniature while leaving the darker color in the under in the recesses of the miniature as well. So this creates three dimensionalities. It also creates highlighting as well. Now there is a negative with dry brushing. If you notice, we have this very pastel kind of chalky texture on our miniatures after we give it the dry brushing. Now that just could happen normally because the pigment is the only thing that's actually adhering to the miniature. However, if you're worried about that chalky appearance, do not worry because we are using a quick paint method on this uh, paint scheme and we're gonna plan on using oil wash. The oil wash will do a beautiful job of smoothing out those textures at the same time, also blending our different layers of base coats as well as dry brushing. So if you don't like that chalky appearance, don't worry, the oil wash stage will fix that up, but just trust in the process. So once again, we're going to use another layer of dry brushes, this time breaking up the vibrancy of our color as well. This time we're using Apple Barrel's Light Mocha. You can get this at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. And once again, I'm just doing an all over dry brush on top of the territorial beige that I've had earlier. As you can see, it's brightened up the skin tones quite a bit, but at the same time, leaving that darker color beneath on the uh, recesses of the miniature as well, adding a lot of highlights and bringing out a lot of the details that we couldn't see earlier with our initial set of dry brushing. And we're going to do one more dry brushing of coat, this time using Drizzle Gray by Delta Serum Coat. You can find this at your local Hobby Lobby for 65 cents. And once again, we're doing one more additional eye brushing all over the entirety of the miniature. What this does is a couple of things. It kind of gives like this ashen gray dead look to the flesh. At the same time though, maintain that darker vibrancy with the colors that we use on the undercoats. Now it may not look like it right now, but when we actually go to the wall oil washing stage, a lot of the dry brushing that we just did is gonna darken down and bring back that dark flesh tone. But at the same time, create that ashy kind of dead look that represents the fact that maybe a lack of blood circulation has been happening with these guys and it's going to create a really neat effect at the same time. So now that you're done with dry brushing your Vox Walkers as well as the main monsters of Kill Team, we're not going to focus on the smaller little creatures that occupy most of the Kill Team's contents. So the very first miniatures we're going to work on are the giant looking uh, tick creatures as well as those buzzing fly looking creatures as well. Now for these guys, because we use black primer on them, what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush them with Pewter Gray by Apple Barrel Paint. It costs you 50 cents at your local Walmart. We're just do a quick dry brush all over the entire surface of the miniature. And as you can see, it does a beautiful job of leaving that darker primer in the recesses of the miniature, while at the same time bringing back a lot of those details we couldn't see earlier because of the black primer. So that Pewter Gray is sticking to the uh, raised surfaces and creating some highlighting as well as depth in the miniatures. So now that we're done with this dry brush, we're going to do a couple of series of more dry brushes to bring up the color on these miniatures. Now the next color we're going to use for our dry brush is Winter Green by Apple Barrel Paint. This once again costs you 50 cents at your local Walmart and we're just going to do another all over dry brush with the Winter Green on top of the gray and the black that we have earlier. Now what this does is it creates this really awesome chitinous type of look like a very insectoid type of look for these miniatures. I use this same technique on the bloat flies that I have for my studio's 3000 point Nurgle Legion of Chaos Army. And it creates this kind of neat looking chitinous effect with the exoskeleton to make it look like you have a hard shell on the outside. At the same time, it's got this sickly green that you get on the effect on the black, so it looks absolutely fantastic. 
Now for this next step, we're gonna use this exclusively on the giant flea tick looking monsters. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use Lime Sherbet by Apple Barrel Paint to do one more dry brush all over the surface of the ex exoskeletons on these giant insects. And the reason why is because we really wanna bring home that idea that these are kinda of like a sickly green color. And because of that, Lime Sherbet's gonna do a beautiful job of bringing on that effect one more time. So once again, just do one more dry brush with the Lime Sherbet. And then from there, we're ready to work on our nurglings as well as our worms. All right, so now that we're done with our insects, the next thing we're working on now are the little nurglings. I believe they're called glitchlings is what they're called in this kill team, as well as the little uh, slug worm maga looking things that we have on the right hand side. So we've already undercoated these guys with some spray from Krylon uh, matte finish with the, uh, sorry, not Krylon matte finish, with uh, Rust-Oleum uh, camouflage sand colored paint. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually bring up some dry brush and create that illusion of depth. Now for the glitchlings, we're gonna use Peaches and Green by Delta Serum Co. Just to give these guys kind of like a fleshy look like these guys are made from like the remains of what was once human beings before they went into the warp. As for the little maggot worm things on the right hand side, we're gonna dry brush that sand color with lime sherbet to kind of create this kind of sickly, rotten flesh look for those guys as well. And once again, doing this dry brushing is gonna leave that darker color in the recesses and bring a lot of those highlights and make it look really awesome at the same time. So now that we're done with most of our dry brushing, the next thing we're gonna do now is start working on the base coats for a lot of the flesh on these guys. As you can see in this picture, I'm working on three monsters specifically. Those three monsters specifically are Vulgar Thrice Curse, as well as a giant Kraken looking monster, as well as the other monster with a blowfly coming at his arm and a giant hook for a hand. Now, what I wanted to create for these guys is I wanna create like this kind of patchwork, Frankenstein kind of inspired paint scheme for these guys. So starting off with uh, Vulgar Thrice Curse, which is the uh, leader of this kill team. He's supposed to be three different people that kind of got merged together when they went through the warp. So because of that, for his right arm, his left arm, I decided to use Sky Blue by Apple Barrel Paint to kind of create this kind of pale, fleshing looking arms that he has on his left side. At the same time, use Apple Barrel's Winter Green on the right arms to make it look like he's getting patched together by different human, by different human beings. Same thing applies for the rest of the kill team as well. So as you look right there in the center character, that giant hook thing that he has for a hand, I use Wild Iris by Apple Barrel Paint, as well as use Wintergreen for the fly looking growth that's coming out of his right arm as well. Now the fly looking thing's got like some scales and some chitinous plates coming out of it as well. So I decided to use Pavement by Apple Barrel Paint to create that effect as well. Now as for the giant fish hook looking Kraken monster creature, for its tentacles on his left arm, I decided to use Wild Iris for all the tentacles, as well as the tentacles that are coming out of its mouth. As for its uh, right hand arm that's reaching out, I decided to use sky blue for that pale flesh color to make it look like this thing's getting kind of patched together. At the same time, that kraken looking creature also has a lot of barnacles growing on its skin, so for that I use marsh green by Apple Barrel Paint. Cost 50 cents and just put two thin coats of all the colors that we have here. As you can see, we got a nice little kind of variety of color uh, on these miniatures as well. Now, continuing on using the wild iris, I decided to use two thin coats of this stuff on all the wings of the fly creatures. As you can see, we do have quite a few different miniatures. These guys we have one large blowfly as well as a couple of swarms. The one that's actually coming out of the skeleton was the most difficult one to do because of all the different rings in that, uh, in that swarm, but just take your time, put two thin coats of wild iris, and then once you're done with that, you're ready to move on to some dry brushing. So going back with the three monsters that we worked on earlier, the dry brushing we use on these guys is, is quite vibrant. Now for all the greens that we have on these miniatures, we use Lime Sherbet to do that. So we use Lime Sherbet and Vulgar Thrice Cursed, as well as the barnacles of the Kraken monster, as well as the Blowfly coming out of the third monster. We also use Lilac Mist by Apple Barrel Paint for all the purples that we've done. So for the tentacles for the Kraken monster, as well as a giant hook arm for the other monster as well. And then of course from there, all the parts that we did in Sky Blue, we then dry brush it with Anita's Acrylic uh, Slate Blue. That costs 65 cents local Hobby Lobby. And we just add that to all the blue flesh tones to kind of add that additional highlight and that illusion of depth. Now the two Apple Barrel paints, you can get those from your local Walmart and they both cost 50 cents. And going back to the little fly swarms that we looked at earlier, we dry brushed their wings with lilac mist by Apple Barrel Paint as well. Just be careful that when you do the dry brushing on the swarms that you don't go uh, over spill onto the greens that you did earlier. So just take your time, do a quick dry brush on all those wings, and then from there, ready to move on to the smaller insects. So going back to those giant tick-like creatures as well as the fly swarms, we decided to bring out some details by using King's Gold, which is a nice yellow color by Apple Roll Paint. You can get this at your local Walmart for 50 cents. And what I decided to do for this one is to use two thin coats of King's Gold for all the eyes and the blowfly creatures, so all the swarms. I picked out their eyes and two thin coats of that, as well as for the abdomen or the thoraxes for the giant flea-like creatures that we also have as well. Now, I should also mention that one of the little maggot worm things looks like it's also vomiting up some acid. So 
in that case, I also picked out that acid coming out of his mouth and two thin layers of King's Gold just to try to create that illusion of like it's spewing some kind of nasty bile at people. And going back to those little maggot monsters, I decided to pick out the little uh, mandibles that they have as well as some spines on the finisher by picking that on two thin layers of pavement paint as well. So that way the pavement paint kind of contrasts nicely to the greenish flesh tone of the maggot's uh, nasty, rotting looking flesh and also creates a nice contrasting color to that. And just to add some more to the uh, illusion of depth, I also did some dry brushing as well with some Drizzle Gray by Delta Serum Coat. Primarily concentrated on the parts I just did in pavement, so things like the mandibles, as well as the spines, as well as the vomit that's coming out of the worm right down the right hand side with that yellow acid that's coming out of its mouth as well. So once you're done with that dry brushing, you're pretty much done almost with all of the uh, magnet creatures. Now for the next few slides, we're actually going to be concentrating uh, primarily on the glitchlings for the most part. So let's go and talk about exactly what we did there. So for the maggot looking monsters, as well as the giant tick looking monsters, and for the glitchlings, we're looking at things like tongues, tentacles, sores all over the bodies. For anything that kind of creates that kind of illusion, we put two thin layers of bright magenta by Apple Barrel paint on it and put two thin coats on it. So things like the tongues of the monsters, the tentacles, as well as some of the uh, sores that they have on their body, the glitchlings, some of the wounds that are exposed, as well as the tentacles coming out of their mouth. We just put two thin layers of that color on everything that we want to have to be brightly magenta. And then we move on from there. Now, if you are afraid of making a mistake of actually overspilling beyond the boundaries using this bright magenta, don't stress out. And the reason why is because Nurgle miniatures are actually quite forgiving to paint, especially if you decide to add homemade blood, gore, as well as slime effects. Because for everything that we do in magenta in this kill team, I'm going to be putting my homemade gore effect on. So whenever we make a painting mistake, it's not a big deal because the gore effect's gonna hide those mistakes for us. Like I said, Nurgle miniatures are very, very forgiving. So if you're a first time painter, you're looking for an army to paint, I suggest going with Nurgle because if it looks sloppy and messy, that's perfectly fine because all it does, it adds to the overall aesthetic of that army. Now the next detail we're going to work on real quick are some of the body parts that we find scattered throughout the miniatures. So like the swarms, for example, of insects, as well as one of these maggot creatures, they are eating bits and pieces of human being. We have heads and torsos and all kinds of stuff. So because of that, for those details, we're just going to pick those out in two thin layers of light mocha by Apple Barrel Paint. And once again, get that at your local Walmart for 50 cents. Now for the next thing we're going to focus on next are all the... Uh, pustules and buboes that are spread throughout all these miniatures as well so like the glitchlings for example have some pustules over their bodies so do the giant tick creatures some of the bloatflies as well and definitely the slime coming out of those maga creatures as well now the color we're going to use for this is kiwi by apple Barrel paint now kiwi is actually a very 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 bright green almost like a day glow kind of neon yellow green and it does a beautiful job of creating that kind of aesthetic toxic look that we're looking for on these miniatures as well you can get this substance at your local Hobby Lobby for about 50, uh, your local Walmart for about 50 cents. Now, like I said before, if you make any mistake with the pustules and the vomit and the ooze and stuff, do not stress. And the reason why is because we're going to put our homemade slime effect on top of that kiwi. So if you do make any mistakes whatsoever, that homemade slime effect could do a beautiful job of hiding that. Like I said, Nurgle miniatures are very, very easy to paint. They're very forgiving as well. And if you're a first time painter, you could not pick a better army to paint because it's really, really simple. Now, going back to the glitchlings specifically, some of these glitchlings have some interesting details. One of them's carrying a wooden sword, another one's carrying a broken bottle as an improvised knife. And the third one's also doing the same thing with a broken femur as well. So for those details for the wooden sword, I use Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel Paint, Winter Green by Apple Barrel Paint for the bottle, as well as Ivory by Apple Barrel Paint for the bone. Now, all three of these you can purchase at your local Walmart, and they cost 50 cents. And the last little detail we're going to do with these guys real fast are all the parts are done in bone. So for example, the guy carrying the uh, little piece of bone for a weapon, the bottle, as well as well as a wooden sword, as well as for the corpses that the uh, maggots, as well as the drones are feeding upon as well. We're just going to dry brush those elements in Drizzle Gray by Delta Serum Coat, uh, just to pick out a little bit more detail, create this kind of pale death look. And then from there, we move on to our metallics. So the next element we're going to focus on are the metallic elements, primarily for the glitchlings, but also for one of the drones as well. Now for the drone on the left hand side, these drones are actually coming from a severed head. So for that, we're going to paint that armor up in Scunmetal Gray by Folk Art. It's a nice, beautiful gunmetal color. You can get your local armor for about 75 cents. And then we're going to paint the visor of that helmet in copper by Folk Art. It's going to cost you 75 cents at your local Walmart as well. Now, as for the glitchlings, the glitchlings actually have these horn skulls, half skull masks that they actually wear. For the actual skull portion of those masks, we're picking out those 
those details on Gunmetal Gray. And as for the horns on those helmets, we're picking that in two thin coats of Delta of Deco Arts Dazzling Metallic Emperor's Gold. You can get that at your local Walmart for about 50 cents as well. So you just put two thin layers of all the metallic paints, and then once that dries, you're ready to move on for some of the detail work. So for the glitchlings, the next thing we're going to work on are the tufts of hair, the little mohawks that are coming out of their helmets as well. Now, like I said, I'm a big fan of bright, bold colors on my armies, so because of that, we're going to use Mermaid Blue by Delta Serum Coat. Uh, let's get this at your local hobby like for about 65 cents. I just put two thin layers on the little mohawks and tufts of hair that are coming out of the glitchlings. And the reason why is because that Mermaid Blue contrasts nicely with the magenta, as well as the flesh color that we painted these guys up. It's a nice little detail that kind of draws your eye directly towards that. It also sets them apart, too from most other kill teams that you see as well. So now that we're done with the smaller elements of our kill team, now let's go ahead and concentrate on the larger figures for these guys as well. So there's a couple of colors that we actually use for these guys. First of all, I use palm leaf on the pants of the uh, of uh, Volgar Thrice Cursed. That way that looks like he's wearing tactical military pants as well. At the same time, I also use King's Gold for the flames that are coming out of the iron grate in his belly. So that way he kind of contrasts nicely with the rest of the miniature. At the same time, for the little giant monster in the middle there, I also picked out the eyes in King's Gold. And for the Kraken monster for its leather bracer around his arm as well as his leg and the executioner's hood it's wearing I picked out two thin layers of pavement paint I also did the same thing with the cloven hooves of the monster in the middle as well and uh, create that kind of nice little dark color using those pavement colors so the next detail we're focused on of course are all the magenta elements as well these so vice uh, for uh, Vulgar Thrice Curse, I picked out that hanging tongue out of the mouth, two thin layers of bright, uh, bright magenta. Same thing with the proboscis coming out of the fly and the monster in the middle, as well as the intestines coming out of its stomach. And at the same time, I also use the exact same color for all the stitching, cutting across the Kraken monster on the right-hand side as well. And like I said before, if I make any mistakes, I'm not too worried about it because I will be putting home a gore effect on top of that, and it's only going to add to the details. Now as for the giant butcher monster with the giant butcher knife and the screaming faces all over its body, we also use two thin layers of bright magenta for all the open mouths all over its body, as well as the tongues that are hanging out of those mouths as well. And like I said, if we make a mistake with this magenta, like it spills over the teeth or onto the flesh, we're not too worried about that because that homemade gore effect is going to do a beautiful job of hiding those mistakes as well. And the next thing we do as well is to do a quick dry brush real quick on all of the uh, magenta portions that we did earlier. And we're using Cameo Pink by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, bright, cotton candy kind of... Uh, candy pink that you can get at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. I also put this on top of all of the purple elements as well, so like the tentacles of the Kraken as well as its mouth, as well as a giant hook blade from the monster there on the left hand side. Uh, the reason why, because just add another just a lot of depth of detail onto those parts and I thought it looked really, really interesting. Now I did forget to take a picture of this, so I'm going to talk about this now. The monster on the right hand side for his shirt as well as his loincloth, I actually picked out two thin layers of ripe tomato by Apple Barrel Paint. It's a nice, beautiful orange color, and I just put two thin glass layers eye on top of his clothing as well. And once we get done with the base coat from the monster's clothing, we then dry brush it with Tropic Orange, which you can get at your local Walmart for about 50 cents. It's also made by Apple Girl Paint. And uh, it's a nice kind of pastel orange. It does nicely create that illusion of depth by catching the folds of the fabric while leaving that ripe tomato in the darker recesses. Now for the butcher monster, because it's got so many screaming mouths over his body, we're going to pick out the detail of the teeth as well and two thin layers of light mocha by Apple Barrel Paint. All we're going to do is look for those teeth and fangs sticking out of his body, putting two thin layers of light mocha on top of it. And then once we get that detail picked out, it looks like it's properly screaming at us now, which looks absolutely terrifying. So the next detail we're going to work on next is all the hair on this miniature as well. The hair on the top of the main head, as well as some of the faces coming out of its flesh as well. So as a nice contrasting color, I decided to use Winter Green by Apple Barrel Paint as a nice contrasting color to all the orange that this character is wearing as well. It's a nice contrasting color, and oddly enough, it kind of fits with the darker skin tone, as well as the magenta paint that we're having on here. Besides, it looks like it's a maniac clown looking monster, so it only adds to that effect that something here is not right. And now that we're done with the hair, the next thing we do, of course, is to dry brush the hair. In this case, we use two thin layers. We do a quick dry brushing with lime sherbet on all the hair of the miniature to create this kind of neon, off-green looking uh, type of highlight. We also use exactly the same lime sherbet for the, uh, the blowfly coming out of the monster there on the left-hand side to create that effect as well. At the same time, the giant tusks that are coming out of its body as well, we also highlight those colors with lime sherbet too to kind of give this kind of oddly infected bone look to that miniature. 
So the next elements we're going to work on now are all the metallic elements, especially on uh, Volgar Thrice Curse. Volgar Thrice Curse actually has the most metallic elements on him. I think it's represent the fact that, you know, he's got pieces of machinery sticking out of his body. So the first thing that I do is I actually paint all the metallics on this miniature, regardless of what it is, in two thin layers of gunmetal gray by Folk Art. And the reason why I do this is it kind of creates a base for the metallic elements, and then I can just alternate different colors on different details I see on this miniature to break up the monotony of colors on him, so that way he's not just all one complete color for the metallic italics and uh, once you get those two thin layers on next we gotta do now is start creating those different color schemes so this is Volgar Thrice Curse when he's all said and done with all the metallic elements. So for example, for some of the pistons that I have on this guy, um, I actually picked out those in two thin layers of aged copper by uh, Anita's metallic paints, just to create some diversity along the steel color. At the same time, things like some of the couplings as well as some of the eyepieces that this guy has, I picked out on two thin layers of Emperor's Gold by uh, Deco Art, uh, just to create that nice vibrant gold that kind of contrasts nicely with all the silver pieces. And at the same time, some of the tubes that are running through this body as well as the smokestack on his back i picked out two thin layers of copper by folk art to create that additional contrasting color so as you can see it looks very very visually interesting because now we have different colors of metallics on this miniature so it doesn't look so monotone so the nice thing about it is you just kind of want to alternate colors uh, as you go through so if you notice one part of it being largely silver throw some copper throw some gold elements on it to kind of break it up or if you have a lot of copper maybe throw some silver on top of it to break up the monotony it's really up to you how you want to do it but just make sure you do it so that way it kind of creates more visual interest for the viewer. So the last little elements we're going to work on these guys real quick are on the pustules as well as the pus marks all over their bodies as well. We're going to pick those out two thin layers of kiwi uh, by Aboriginal paint as well, just like how we did for the smaller miniatures. Just picking out those details and just adding them really quick so that way we can cover them over with the uh, homemade slime effect to make them look really, really cool as well. As you can see, I also put some mermaid blue for things like the fish on the hip of the uh, Kraken monster, as well as eye lenses for both the monster on the left-hand side as well as Vulgar Thrice Cursed. Um, at the same time, I also did some metallic elements with the keychain around the neck of uh, the guy with the giant butcher cleaver and also paint up his butcher cleaver as well. So with that being said, we're going to now move on to the Vox Walkers. So now that we're done for all the metallic elements for the big monsters, next we're going to do now is start working on the Vox uh, Walkers. So as you can see here, we're just picking out some details. For the one with the giant crab claw on his left on his right arm, we picked out two thin layers of wild iris. For the handle of the boarding axe that the one in the center is using, we used character beige. And then for the one with the growths coming off its uh, left hand side of its body, we used winter green for the arm as well as for the leg. So the next thing we're going to work on as well as some of the more finer detail elements on these guys as well. So from the monster on the left hand side, I gave you his palm leaf to paint up his mohawk just to kind of set him up and make it look kind of interesting as well. I also use holly branch by Apple Barrel paint as well to paint all the frag grenades around the belt of these Vox Walkers as well. And the last thing I decided to use was Mermaid Blue by Delta Serum Co. to create their uniforms. And the reason why I use that color specifically is because it contrasts very nicely with the brown tones that we have all over the miniatures. So it's a nice contrasting color. At the same time, it also looks kind of neat because you don't really see much blue uniforms being used too much so i thought having that mermaid blue would have a nice visual interest uh to create this army make it stand out and make it look very unique so once we're done with that, next thing we do now is to work on the leather elements. So we have some of these guys wearing boots. We also have belts and straps and stuff all over these guys. So to paint those elements up, we just put two thin layers of pavement paint by Apple Burl Paint. And once we're done putting those leather goods on, the next thing we need to start working on now are some more dry brushes. So for the dry brushing on the leather goods we just did in pavement paint, we used Pale Gray by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Walmart for about, uh, Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. Just do a quick dry brush to create that, that illusion of depth and texture on those leather goods that we did. At the same time, we also use Lime Sherbet in order to do a dry brushing on the Mohawk, on the Vox Walker on the left hand side, as well as for the tumorous growths on the guy who's located in the center as well. Now from there, the next detail we're going to work on real quick is on the entrails and tentacles and sores and open wounds that these guys have on them. And so just like our previous miniatures, we're going to pick out those details in two thin layers of bright magenta apple barrel paint. And once again, we're painting those tentacles, painting those wounds, painting those stitch marks. And once again, if we overspill, it's not going to be that much of a big deal because we're going to cover that up with some gore paint anyways. So it's all going to work out in the end. So for the Vox Walkers, for the wounds, and as well as for the tentacles, we're just going to do a quick dry brush with Cameo Pink. This is exactly the same color we use for all the entrails, as well as for the open wounds, as well as the tentacles for the larger miniatures, and also the smaller miniatures in this kill team as well. And once again, we're creating that illusion of texture, as well as depth on these miniatures, and once you're done with that Cameo Pink, ready to move on to our finer details. 
So one of the last few details we're going to focus on real fast before we move on to the uh, metallic elements are things like the sores and wounds that these characters have. So for example, for those of those guys who have sores and wounds, we just picked out two thin layers of kiwi by apple barrel paint again. So we just look for those pustules and just kind of add that there as well. At the same time, we also use a light mocha for some of the things that we do for things like the horns, the claws, that also decorate these guys as well. And once we have those two thin colors done, next we do now we'll move on to our metallics. So once again, we're using three different colors from most of the metallics. We're using gunmetal gray by Folk Art, copper by Folk Art, as well as deco art, dazzling metallics, and burst gold. So for things, for example, that we did in the gunmetal gray, for example, the skulls, the blades of the weapons, the hook, that sort of thing as well. Now we also use the copper color to break up by some of those details by picking out things like the wiring that's coming out of the skull helmets and stuff like that. At the same time, we also used uh, Deco Arts Emperor's Gold for things like the uh, like some of the detail metallic pieces, like some of the weapon halves, uh, the shafts of some of the weapons, the guards of some of the weapons as well. Now, the last thing we did, of course, is we also picked up these little diodes that are built along the collars that these guys are wearing. And for that, we used King's Gold by Apple Barrel Paint to kind of create this kind of hazard light kind of look to them to make a look at these guys are just kind of wearing those as a way to like illuminate the darkness or whatever. So at the same time, it looks really, really awesome. And also add some... Or, uh, much needed color to this uh, kill team and with that this is what the overall look of the kill team will be once it's fully assembled and painted and before we do our oil wash as you can see we do have a very chalky pastel finish on these guys and the reason why is because we have not added the oil finish once we add the oil finish on there it's going to smooth out those transitions as well as smooth out those textures at the same time darken down the value of the colors that we're using for the vibrancy of these miniatures so this is what your kill team is going to look like before you use the oil wash and on that topic our next step is an all oil, oil, oil over oil wash over all over the entirety of the miniatures. Now, a lot of people for this quick paint method, they like to use Armor Painter Strong Tone or do this step, which is perfectly fine because Armor Painter Strong Tone does exactly as is advertised. The only problem though is that Armor Painter Strong Tone does cost $32 per can, while Minwax Poly Shade and Emission Oak Color does exactly the same thing, only well, costs $6.99 for a can. So as you can see in these miniatures, that's exactly what we did. We put an oil wash all over the entirety of the miniatures and the oil wash does a couple of amazing things. The first thing that it does is it also smooths out the transitions between our base coats and our dry brushing. If you notice that chalky pastel look is now completely gone because the oil wash has done that. By splitting those layers together and smoothing out those transitions, it makes it look very, very smooth on the dry brushing as well as the highlighting that we've done on our base coats. At the same time, the oil wash also darkens down the vibrancy of our colors. As you notice, these guys do not look as nearly technicolor or cartoony as they did before. And the reason why is because that oil wash does darken down the value of those colors. That's the reason why we use such vibrant colors in the beginning because we know that's going to be muted down by the oil washing as it goes on. Now the very last thing that the oil wash also does, it also creeps into the recesses and crevices in the miniature, bringing a lot of those details that we couldn't see earlier. So things like textures, folds in the skin, the stitching, the vibrancy of their color, uh, the, uh, the weaving of their clothing, the individual strands of hair that they have, the texturing on their wings and tentacles, all kinds of things. And it brings out those details that we didn't see earlier with the dry brushing as well as the base coating. Now, once you do this oil wash, I highly suggest that you set these aside, uh, set, the, uh, set these aside to dry and cure for at least 24 hours. And the reason why is because the poly shade Mission Oak color does have polyurethane built into it. So it's gonna give a nice kind of shiny gloss of your miniatures at the same time protect it as well. But because the polyurethane needs time to dry and cure, you should just really let it alone and not handle it. If you handle the miniatures while they're still tacky and still drying, you could run the risk of actually ripping off the texture and this, uh, the painting job that you just put on your miniatures, ruining the finish of it as well. And I'm talking from experience here. So in my opinion, make this the very last step of whatever painting process that you do, so that way if you're done for the time that you do your painting, you can come back to it later. By the time you come back to it, it should be dried and cured and ready to go. So once these things have dried and cured, the next thing we do now is start working on the bases. And in this case, I use pavement paint by Apple Barrel Paint, and I only put one thin layer directly on top of the texturing. Now you might be wondering, Commander Cheapskate, won't the base coat actually come through that pavement paint that you actually put on the bases? If it does, it's perfectly fine. As you can see, you can see the brown cut undercoat on some of these bases already. That's perfectly fine, and the reason why is because we're gonna be adding some of the dry brushing on top of these bases, so that brown color bleeding through the black, it's just gonna add to the overall look of these miniatures. 
as you can see in this next uh, this next photo, we're going to use a thin coat of uh, Folk Arts uh, Burnt Sienna. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. And we're going to dry brush the texturing of their bases with this Burnt Sienna. Now I'm painting up this Kill Team's bases the same way I paint up all the Nurgle miniatures in my studio's collection. We're going to create this kind of burnt ash wasteland toxic waste kind of oozy look on all the bases it just looks really really awesome it contrasts nicely with the miniatures as well and so by dry brushing that pavement with that uh, burnt sienna it's going to add to that overall mutated burnt out wasteland look and once again, we're going to dry brush those bases one more time with a different color, this time using Terracotta by Folk Art. You can get this at your local Hobby Lobby for about 75 cents. And once again, just doing a quick dry brush all over the texturing of the miniatures. As you can see, it creates this kind of burnt out, ashy, dusty, wasteland look that I really like using for a lot of the chaos miniatures that we have in our studio's collection. So once we're done with that dry brushing for the Folk Art, we're all done with the texturing. Now it's time to add the toxic waste and ooze. And I forgot to mention, this step is optional. Um, I like to put a matte varnish on my miniatures because the polyurethane does add a kind of a candy coated sheen to the miniatures. Now I know some people like that high gloss finish on the miniatures, I personally don't. So because of that, this step is completely optional. What I do is I buy a can of Krylon matte varnish and spray the entirety of the miniatures down real quick to bring down the sheen of that polyurethane. As you can see, you can see a lot of the details that we couldn't see earlier because the light was reflecting off of the polyurethane coating. So the first step we're going to use in order to create that slimy kind of oozy wasteland look is we're going to actually paint the bases with Kiwi by Apple Pearl Paint. We're only going to put one thin layer of this stuff all over the entire of the bases that we want to actually have ooze. Now you might be thinking, well, Commander Chiefs get one of the darker colors actually bleed through the Kiwi paint. The answer is it absolutely will. But don't stress out about it because once we put our homemade slime effect on it, those darker patches of color in the Kiwi is going to make it look like it's rolling oozy, contaminated with all kinds of nasty things things you don't even want to think about and it's going to add over to the overall effect and it's going to look really awesome at the same time. Like I said, painting Nurgle miniatures is very, very easy and very forgiving. That's one of the reasons why I love painting these kind of miniatures up so much. And in this step, this is where we add our homemade slime effect as well as homemade blood effect. Now you could buy a pot of Nurgle's Rot as well as Blood for the Blood God. Um, they do exactly as advertised by Citadel great products. The only problem is they cost $4.55 a piece in order to do it this way. Now what I like to use instead is I like to use I like to use um, Midwax Polyacrylic. Polyacrylic is a clear gloss is what I like to use. It's kind of like a finish that you put on top of wood, but when it dries, it dries kind of glossy as well. It's also water soluble. The nice thing about Midwax Polyacrylic is if you mix it with some acrylic paint, it creates different beautiful colored uh, slimes. So for the gore effect that I use on these miniatures, I just add some Anita's True Red into that uh, polyacrylic, creates a glossy blood effect. Uh, take some Kiwi paint, add to that polyacrylic, creates slime effects as well. So I take my homemade slime effects, I take my homemade uh, blood effects, and I apply them to whatever I want on the miniatures. So all the parts that we did in Bright Magenta earlier, we put a thin coat of homemade gore effect, and as you can see, it looks really fantastic. It also brings out that kind of gory, kind of bloody look, and it also holds a lot of the mistakes we made earlier. As for the pustules and sores in the miniature, we also put a thin layer of our homemade slime effect on top of that, as well as all the goo and wasteland, uh, wasteland look that we have on the bases to kind of give this pro really slimy, nasty, kind of contaminated look to all the miniatures. And at the end of the time, as we get done with it, it also looks really, really awesome as well. And finally, the last that we use in order to create these miniatures is to rent the bases. We put two thin layers of Folk Art Spurn Sienna, and then once that is done and dried, you have a fully completed kill team to bring Rot and Ruin to the battlefields of the 40k universe in your games of kill team. So with that being said, let's talk about the end result. So let's go ahead and talk about the material that you need to purchase from both Citadel as well as Army Painter if you want to paint up your kill team of Geller Pox Infected to look just like ours and using the exact same techniques. This is assuming, of course, that you're purchasing everything for the very first time. Now, you'll need to buy Wraithbone Spray, which is going to cost you $22, Chaos Black Spray for $17, as well as Rhinox Hide Spray for $22. From there, you need to buy Slanesh Gray, Vulcan Green, Bane Blade Blown, Everland Sunset, Nagaroth Knight, Militarm Green, Longbeard Gray, Fulgrim Pink, Dakala Lilac, Caliban green, Screamer Pink, Luganeth Orange, Cyberite Green, Blue Horror, all those pots of paint are going to cost you $4.55 because those are a combination of base as well as layer paints. You also need to buy uh, Wildwood Contrast Paint for $7.08 there. You'll then also need to purchase Baylor Brown, Gauss Blaster Green, Moot Green, Eschen Gray, Troll Slayer Orange, Flayed One Flesh, 
all those are to cost you $4.55. And for all the blue elements, you'll need to buy a pot of Talisar Blue for $7.80. From there, you'll also need to buy Ultimon Gray and Fenrisian Gray, which also cost you $4.55. Now, for all the metallic elements, you'll need to purchase Brass Scorpion, Lead Belcher, Screaming Bell. Those are to cost you $7.80. For some of the brown effects that we did for the bases, you'll need to buy Doom Bull Brown and Squig Orange, which cost you $4.55 for that. Retributor armor for all the gold elements for $7.80. And if you decide to do the quick paint method, you'll need to buy a can of Army Painter Strong Tone, which is going to cost you $32. Now, for all the rot as well as blood effects, you'll need to buy a pot of blood for the Blood God and Nurgle's Rot for $4.55. If you want to do the matte varnish like we did, you'll need to buy a can of Mutatarian Varnish for $19.50. And for the texturing on your bases, you'll need to buy a pot of Astro Granite. Now, assuming you're purchasing all those materials for the very first time, you're talking about a grand total investment of $200 and $85.40 of painting up your miniatures look exactly the same way we did, but using Army Painter as well as Games Workshop products. Now, when you subtract the cheapskate method of only $49.94 for our materials, you're talking about a grand total savings of $235.46. Just to give you guys an idea of how much money that actually is, that's approximately the price of the starter set for uh, Kill Team Into the Darkness, Into the Dark. That costs about $230. That's how much money we're saving you guys. We're saving you so much money from our paint jobs that you can actually buy that box set if you wanted to. So there you guys have it. This is how you guys can quickly and more importantly, cheaply paint up your Geller Pox Infected for Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. As always, please feel free, to leave, feel free to leave a comment, like, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is valuable to us as always. Also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Blogger.com for all this greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, you guys. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay classy.